This is a new sketchbook. I have spent a little bit of time in it. Not a lot yet. Um, new, new sketchbooks can be a little intimidating. In fact, that's why the first page here, I opened it up and I wrote this little message to myself. It says, this is an ugly mark. It is to remind you that nothing is perfect. Make stuff anyway. I started out, and I've never really done this before, but I started out with the idea of, um, can I use both sides of the sketchbook here? And so this is the first guy that I started making. I have no idea what it is. I'm not even sure that I had an idea when I started. I just kind of jumped in and started sketching. Um, and I think that that's valuable to do. So today I'm just going to continue that. I'm going to jump onto a new page and keep working there. And then at some point I'll come back and I'll, I'll continue working on this guy. I've never really spent time in sketchbooks working on both sides of the page, but I think I might try to in this one. And so we'll just see what happens. I think it's valuable, especially if you have the stress of a new sketchbook, to just get in there and start making some marks. I don't have much, if any, of an idea what I'm going to do at this point. I'm just going. Feels vaguely tree-like, which I suppose makes sense been spending time in Elden Ring again, and then also just some of my artwork lately has been involving trees and organic forms. I was talking to a good friend of my good friend of mine yesterday and he said, you know, your art often tends towards organic forms as opposed to rigid geometric forms, things like stones, rocks, or uh, human creations of one kind or another. And I think that's true, and I think for me that is largely just because the organic seems more forgiving to me. The rigid structures are not particularly forgiving. They don't give you a lot of grace because it's really easy to pick up on when things are wrong. If something's not symmetrical, if something's not parallel, it's really easy to see that that was probably not intentional. The artist didn't mean for that to go the way that it did. And organic forms have a lot more grace involved in them. It's a lot easier to just keep moving and see what happens. So I think that might be part of the reason why I tend towards the organic forms. There's a couple things to take from that. One is the fact that that means probably I should get over it and put a little bit more time into the geometric into the things that are a little scary to me, the little things that I have some apprehension towards. On the other side of that is that it's good to know what things you tend towards because you don't always have to work on your weaknesses. Sometimes it can be just as beneficial, if not more beneficial, to work on your strengths and to hone your strengths. And as a tertiary example of that, I think it's really beneficial sometimes to work on things that are comfortable because they allow you to keep working. It's very easy to dedicate yourself to practice and spend gratuitous amounts of time working towards bettering yourself only to find that you're not enjoying what you're doing right now. And when you're not enjoying what you're doing for small amounts of time, that's fine. Um, not all of life is enjoyable as much as we would like it to be. But if you are subjecting yourself to something you don't particularly enjoy for a very long period of time, then you may find that you, you don't want to do it anymore. You disengage from the thing. And that's, that's a problem if your goal is to keep working and get better and progress, especially artistically. I was thinking about this, and again, with that same friend I mentioned, we were talking about... Um, how difficult art progress can be. And he mentioned, well, what did you do when it came to music? In high school and in college, I spent a lot of time in punk bands. And it just never quite felt the same as art to me. He said, well, what did you do? Because obviously you weren't born 
with the ability to play guitar and write songs. And thinking back, I had some innate talent. I had some innate skill when it came to the music. And so therefore it was uh, the barrier to entry was a little bit less, but I found out how to make it fun early. And when the practice was fun, when just sitting down and playing guitar was fun, I spent a lot of time doing it and spending a lot of time doing it. I ended up improving. I didn't spend a lot of that time practicing scales or difficult time signatures. I spent most of that time playing uh, songs that were, you know, mediocre from a skill standpoint. I spent a lot of that time just playing, but that play either literally as like a child would play or as one might say when they talk about an instrument playing an instrument that play is what allowed me to grow and to excel i just kept putting time in and i kept investing that time that play time back into my instrument and so inevitably i improved and there's wisdom to that i think wisdom that i have not managed until just recently to see in my artwork as well that if you can practice via playing you're going to stick with it longer and perhaps later on in this conversation i'll get into what uh practice what role practice might take in a long-term art schedule but for the time being It's in, if play allows you to continue working and to continue staying in the media, continue creating, that is probably the most important thing. Once you're putting a lot of time into it, then you can start to see where your weaknesses are and you can start focusing on things that you want to improve. But it's hard enough to just get into making art in the first place that if you can just find a way to do it where you enjoy it, and where it doesn't feel like a chore to get into it all the time, that's probably a really good place to start. And if you find yourself after six months of just enjoying your art, suffering from the inability to create characters the way that you want, then you know what? You still spent six months enjoying something, and joy is a commodity. So that's not a bad thing just right off the bat. But also... If you've spent six months struggling to do something the way that you want, and now you're going to dedicate yourself spe to specific practice to focus on anatomy or whatever it might be, then when anatomy becomes agitating, as it is prone to do, then you just jump back into the stuff that's low stress. You jump back into the stuff that's enjoyable, and you've got, you've got something to return to. And that keeps you in the medium. It keeps you making the work. And every moment that you're in it, that you're enjoying it, that you're making the work, you're progressing. I would say that probably when you're, pract when you're practicing, you're going to progress faster. Right now, what I'm drawing, this little tree guy, um, am I growing a lot during this drawing? Probably not. Probably not. But I'm drawing, nonetheless. I'm making things. I'm thinking about things. Uh, some of those things are coming out as I'm speaking, some of those things are just little reflections on what I'm putting together. I'm, I'm processing, okay, this is a three-dimensional shape. Light seems to be coming from the right side in some capacity. There's a little bit of an overhang and an overlap here. Um, but it's also difficult because trees are not solid. Like this is a mass of leaves, and so it's not entirely a solid thing. And that means that some of the light that comes up at the top is also going to pass through to the bottom. And a lot of my practice lately has been on rocks and trees. Yesterday it was clouds. And these, which I find ironic too, because they're all kind of the same shapes, like the top of trees, clouds, stone. They're all kind of from the same ethereal material plane. And I don't know if that's why I felt drawn to them, but... I know mostly I felt drawn to them because I can't do them very well. I work pretty proficiently when I'm working from reference, and the goal that I'm working on in my own artistic journey right now is learning how to craft from imagination. And it took me a long time to realize 
and I feel a little dumb for not having realized this earlier, that the way to get better at drawing from imagination is to draw from imagination. And that shouldn't be this massive revelation, but in a lot of ways it kind of is. I found myself seeking out uh, a secret sauce, a secret recipe that would allow me to draw from imagination. I just need to find the person who does it well and learn how they think and how they process this. And in so doing, I too will learn the ability to um, draw from my head, from to get these crazy images in my brain out onto the page. And that's not how that works. You know, how did I get better at drawing from reference, painting from reference? Well, I did a lot of that. How did I get better at playing guitar? Well, I did a lot of it. I played a lot of guitar. And that's how I got better at it. And it seems to me, and all the evidence that I'm finding, all the research I'm finding, all the people I'm listening to, it seems to me that's exactly the same way that any human progresses at any skill, is you just do the thing. And so if you want to get better at drawing from imagination, you have to spend a lot of time drawing from imagination. And it's not going to be good. There's going to be a lot of times where it's just not great. Um, this is kind of funny, um, just as a little aside. My my brain wants to turn the sketchbook so I can get these angles correctly. I can do the vertical lines a lot better than I can do the horizontal ones because it's just how your wrist moves. Um, but because I'm recording it as I'm doing this, like, ah, oh, I don't want to turn it because that would be awkward. But, you know, perhaps, that, perhaps that's not such a big concern. Um, this is, you know, being recorded at the moment I'm doing it. And so there's, uh, there's an authenticity in just turning it and doing it the way that it needs to be done. So let's just do that. Um, let's not overthink it, Zach. So, but that seems ironic to me now. And I, I am fighting a little bit of the agitation of goodness, man. Like you should have come to that realization years ago and you would have all this time that you hadn't wasted, uh, which is of course true and totally pointless to spend time contemplating because dwelling on what could have been in the past when it comes to your artistic journey is just, it's fruitless. And it would just make me um, agitated and not solve anything, not provide me with any benefit or boon. And so, yeah, I've just come to the realization recently that if I want to learn how to draw from imagination, I have to draw from imagination a lot. And it's gonna be bad um, there's going to be a lot of it that is bad and there's going to be pieces of it every once in a while that turn out pretty well. And I, I just have to keep putting in the mileage. I got to keep slogging, slogging on. And there's a couple things there. If you are finding yourself in a similar position, if you are trying to work on a particular artistic skill, drawing from imagination, uh, drawing from reference, drawing trees, uh, learning how to construct poses, Anytime that you have a little minor success, document it. And that documentation can take a lot of different um, forms, depending on who you are and depending on how you operate. But one of the beneficial ones that I do is sometimes I'll take a photo, sometimes I'll just open up the notes in my phone and I'll write it down, but it's good to indicate when you had successes. Because inevitably, regardless, you're going to have a time several months from now when you look back at your artwork and you go, my goodness, I'm terrible. I should probably quit. And it might be not be that drastic in how you self-talk, but there's going to be some points at which you're, you're not sure about what you're doing and, and maybe it's, maybe none of this is worth it. So you can look at that documentation and you can go, Oh, you know what? Like, I was really bad at drawing people and I'm a little better now. And I can look at this piece that I did three months ago and see, oh my goodness, like that's really bad. But then the one after it, like I actually nailed that pose. Like that looks reasonably well, reasonably good, I suppose. Um, there is a little bit of a difficulty in talking while uh, drawing and these contemplative things. But you can look back on that moment and you can look back on that thing and you can ascertain that growth has occurred. And we need that. We're tough on ourselves. We're very hard on ourselves. And 
just having a moment you can return to and a success that you can look back at and remind yourself, that, oh yeah, you know, I, I am improving. Even if it's very slow, I am improving. And we need that encouragement. It's really important for us to have that encouragement, to be able to understand that we are growing, that we are improving, that things are not totally static, that things can get better. I wonder if doing this in the future might be beneficial for me to, it might be beneficial for me to prep like some references or some ideas prior. You know, I started working on the tree, having no idea what I was doing. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm kind of done with tree guy. And also contemplating the fact that while I'm drawing him, it's, it, is it too small on the camera? I'm recording with a new program, all these things, so many things happening. Are you guys like that too sometimes where you just, all you want to do is sit down and draw, but your brain is processing 30 million other things simultaneously. There are days I wish I could turn that off, that I could just reduce the amount of noise and conversation in my head. The other part of that, though, is at my age and um, you know, being married, having a daughter, and we live on a little bit of property, so we've got some critters. There's, there is just always something to be processing. And so I can go outside and, you know, water the garden or collect the eggs from the chickens or say hi to my dogs. And I can be processing scripts. I can be processing ideas. I can be thinking about, you know, a vacation that I might want to do in six years. And there is, there is some benefit to that. And as much as there's some, some detriment to the processing of everything all the time, and overthinking there's also some some benefits that come from that and as i don't think it's something about myself that i can probably change and also that something that i don't have a particular desire to change it just seems like it might be beneficial to look into honing it how do i benefit from this thing that maybe i'm subjected to maybe is just part of who i am and it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't matter if overthinking is something that I should seek pity for or something that's just a natural flow and component of my my brain. It's just it's it is that. It is part of me. Um, I find myself gesturing even though, you know, the camera's like pointing straight down. But it's a part of me. And so instead of complaining about it, I wanna figure out if there's ways that I can utilize it to to help me. And I, I think there are a lot of a lot of benefits to overthinking and to overprocessing. Dang, I was talking while I did this line, and then I was like, "Oh, the waterfall right there would be cool." But now I've got the the line there. So, um, you know what though? Let's uh, let's turn this into some kind of bridge structure, and then we can yeah, almost like a, maybe like an aqueduct or something. And then we can have the water go under it. That'll work. That'll work. I don't know what that's going to be. Um, so, yeah. Let's say that maybe this is a... I don't, I don't have any sense of size here right now. These look like mountains. Maybe they're... Maybe they are. Maybe this is just a, a massive, massive structure. Um, but then we'll get some water coming out here. This is a new sketchbook. This is moleskin, which I've heard a lot about. Maybe it's worth the hype. I don't know yet. This I'm, I mean, just like you saw earlier, this is my second or third page, depending on how you want to count them. And it doesn't bleed a lot. And that's been really enjoyable. It's been really nice. Just the fact that it doesn't bleed through, but yeah, I'll, I'll give a report on it once I get a little bit more in, once I have 10, 15, 20 hours in this sketchbook. Right now I have, oh geez, maybe like three. So I feel like there's a point that I was starting to make there and it's gone now. Um, but yeah, 
I do think for future uh, versions of this, I probably will have some references slash ideas prepped. And especially if I convert these to live stream at some point, I will probably, um, probably do that. But for now, this is working just fine. Trying to keep my stress levels low as I'm planning on editing this very little and just allowing it to be this slow meandering conversation and talk. And I just hope and pray that some of you who listen to this uh, will benefit from it, that you can see this is, this is how one other human creates and works and produces. And it's also a little bit of a counter to the sped up speed paints and speed draws that I and many others produce. There's nothing wrong with those innately, but I think that sometimes we find ourselves comparing our speed of execution to those kinds of pieces when they're not real. At the end of the day, I'm going to take a sip of water real quick. At the end of the day, they're, they're not real. That's not a real person producing something that quickly. What it is, is it's something that's sped up so you can see the process. And if you treat it as such, that's really nice and really beneficial. But if you watch one of my painting or drawing videos as I'm talking about some topic and then don't process the fact that what I'm producing in there is sped up four or eight times, it can be really easy to put that pressure on yourself to be able to produce quickly like that. And so something like this is a counterpoint to it. Something like this is just, no, this is just me meandering through my sketchbook. I have very little expectation as to what I'm creating here. I'm just meandering with my thoughts. I'm meandering with my pen. I'm contemplating my place in the universe. And I'm sharing some of that with whoever is deciding to listen to this. And I, the goal is just to hopefully display that like this is humanity. This is a little bit of what one other person is like as they create. Maybe you'll put this on and listen to it and watch it while you create as well. I think that would be a fabulous use of time. I know I do that sometimes where I will just put on someone else working while I sit there and put things together. But this is just one other human. This is just me and my work and my meanderings and what they look like. And try not to have expectations that you are as fast or as proficient as all the people that you see on YouTube. There's a lot of really lovely beneficial stuff on YouTube, but I know from talking to a lot of my students, um, from my own feelings and from things I've read, that we can accidentally compare ourselves to that speed. We can accidentally compare ourselves to all of that edited material that is popping up here. You gotta remember too that 90% of the stuff that you're seeing on a website like this, if it is still in fact a website, it's an app, is curated, massively curated. The stuff that you see on Instagram is, that is real, but at the same time, you might only be seeing every second, third, seventh, 20th painting. What you're seeing is what the person wants you to see unless they're a really honest uh, person with high integrity and they just post everything they do. Um, and there's a place for that, I suppose. I don't post everything I do. There are things every once in a while where it's like, this is embarrassing. And I probably need to work on that, but it's just true. I would assume that many of you have the same situation every once in a while that you work on things and you just don't always feel good about everything you produce. I can't imagine feeling good about everything you produce. I think there are some really optimistic people that that is um, maybe how they process life. Uh, wonderful for them. I am not optimistic in any sense of the word. Uh, there are days where I wish that I was as I have a tendency to see much more of the negative than I do the positive. And whilst that leads to me not being disappointed, particularly frequently, 
It is certainly not the secret to happiness, and I wouldn't recommend it. If you can hold on to some good optimism, some hope, some excitement about things, that is that is a much more optimal way to live. I think that that would, yeah, I think that that's just a, it's a good way to exist on this planet. Life can be tough enough if you can find some ways to hold on to hope then yeah that's just it's just a good idea it's just a good idea Okay, now I'll immediately start getting sense of scale as I just nonchalantly and not really logically start drawing trees. <laughs> and all of a sudden now it's like, oh, yes, those trees are approximately, you know, tree sized. And so now I now I have an idea of how big these hills are. Like, oh, okay, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe these are gargantuan trees. Maybe they're tiny. It's funny how much you can think about while you draw or how little you can think about. I just started doing the trees without thinking about it. But then as soon as I started doing the trees, my brain's telling me, well, you know, this is the side that you have shading on, which means this side of the hill is going to get more sunlight, which means you're probably going to get more trees over there. Unless it's a particularly arid climate, in which case you get more trees on the other side because that side's going to retain moisture. And yeah, again, this is just the, the random chaos that is in my brain at all times. And as I continue to build my art skills to the point where I can potentially even understand and draw the tree that is on the one side of the hill versus the other side of the hill, the tree that needs more water, the tree that needs less water, um, I think that I will benefit from those things. But as of right now, it sometimes just seems like noise. I'm just very comfortable with the voices. I haven't known much of another way. Do you find that even when I'm drawing like this, where I'm purposefully trying to have low expectations for what comes out, it's very difficult to actually do that. It's very difficult to actually just reduce your, your expectations. And part of that's the fact that I'm recording this and that this is going to be very minimally edited. And obviously I'm not gonna replace the drawing that I did in the background. So this is, we're gonna be stuck with this. You're stuck with this, I'm stuck with this. and. Yeah, but it's it's hard. It's hard not to have any expectations. I find myself frequently unconsciously starting a piece and having this unconscious level of expectation that like maybe this piece will be the one where I crack whatever issue I'm working on. And that's almost never the case. In fact, I found that the work that I can do, the work that I do where I am lower stress, that's really terrible English, the work, when I can get myself into a place where I have low levels of stress while I'm working, I find that I progress much more effectively. I suppose as I do more of this, I will hone in on the skill of drawing and talking at the same time. My first run-in with that kind of multitasking was writing on the whiteboard while I was teaching and I would start talking while I was writing and inevitably I would leave out a word or two and not notice it until later. I did eventually learn how I had to do that and build up the skills to make that work, but there was a lot of times where I would leave out an and or a the or a then, and especially working with younger kids, they're just, they wouldn't be much of an understanding of why. Like, why did you misspell that? Why did you put an E in that word? Why did you leave this out? Like, ah, because my brain's trying to talk and write simultaneously and not talk and write the same thing. Trying to have a conversation about something and then also write something different, write a set of instructions. So there is a, a lot of multitasking that has to happen and some of us are good at it, some of us are not. I think art has a certain level of multitasking that's just inherent in it. I was talking to my buddy about this yesterday as well. 
in that um, I'm a really good multitasker most of the time, uh, but I'm not sure that I'm great multitasking art-wise. Like if I have to be thinking about simultaneously my, my light sources, but also how a tree functions and the dappled light that's coming from the clouds up above, that's probably too much for me right now. I need to work on my levels of proficiency with each of those individual components. And then I should be able to do a much better job of managing all those individual components simultaneously. It's just a lot. I am coming up on where I think I'm gonna close out this little sketchbook session. If you've stuck it out this long, if you're still here, uh, please consider subscribing. Um, before that, please consider just leaving some comments about how your artistic workflow manifests, what you're working on sketching. Um, any of your thoughts on any of the random <laughs> strange things I rambled about? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. Um, and if you enjoy it, then subscribing would be great, mostly because you can be here for the future when we do other videos like this. And potentially if I start live streaming, I'd love to have some of you work on your own art while I am streaming so that we can work on things together. I'd love to see what all of you are up to, whether you're doing videos or you've got an Instagram or something, if you could share that, that would be lovely. So anyway, I think we're gonna close this little drawing session out right about here. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you can do something creative and I hope you can relieve yourself of some of the expectations that I'm sure are just holding onto you with a death grip. So yeah, I hope that you can just produce some, some lovely, some quirky, some ugly things as you move through your day. And uh, yeah.